Welcome to Crazy Hank TV, the start of the greatest rewatch in the history of rewatching television. Yes, we're doing a lost rewatch. It's the tenth anniversary coming up, right? It's ten years since it <clears throat> ended, since it went off the air. Yeah, yeah. And I got two of the best podcasters to kick it off here. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? And <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm Ralph uh, uh, Darmalar's Kaiju Podcast. All right, let's do a podcast. Um, I think that's it. That's it. Where can they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go to uh, if you if you if you've heard of any of those, uh, follow at Casino Skunk. I have CasinoSkunk.com. Uh, that'll have all the links that you need to see. Um, and uh, yeah, right now, uh, Dharma Lars is kind of whenever there's anything lost to talk about. Um, all right, let's do a podcast as a pop culture podcast that, uh, we get around doing every couple months with my friend, Kevin. And then the Kaiju podcast is all about Godzilla, King Kong, Gamera, <laughs> Mothra, Angulus, uh, every, uh, yeah. sort of giant monster you could think of. Um, and that's with, uh, me and, uh, Jorge Garcia. I've heard of him. from the show Alcatraz. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's that's um, y- y- considering both of our schedules, somehow we're able to have that one uh, uh, show up regularly. Every other Monday at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, you will get a brand new Kaiju podcast with me and Jorge. Nice. 5 a.m. Why 5 a.m.? Um, I figured it was. Uh, it was a good time for both the East and West coast. Uh, I figured if people get it at eight, they can listen on their commute. Uh, uh, folks will see it in their feed when it pops up on social media. I have, them. I have, um, we, we have to pre record a bunch of them and then, uh, I edit and make sure it goes out. So I schedule them to go out at that exact time so that, um, I don't have to worry about it, oh, nice, you know, nice. I, and I want it to be, you don't, you don't wake up and do it. So. <clears throat> no. I well, it well, uh, my days off change and I work graveyard shifts. So now it, it posts while I'm at work, but, um, yeah, every other Monday we've been doing it for, uh, in January, it'll be our third year wow. of doing the show. And we've never once missed a Monday at five. That's pretty like good. Like I said, it's every other Monday. That's pretty but, good. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's cool. That's great. And if anybody wants to jump on board, you uh, you don't have to listen to all of them. Uh, we just did a King Kong episode a couple weeks ago. If you happen to see that movie, that episode is self-contained. So, all right. Yeah, check it out. All right. Axel? Cool. Well, first off. Nice uh, shirt, by the way. Yes. Check it out my uh what would john Locke do shirt something stupid i would assume uh, <laughs> I, love oh, I also have my jumpsuit jack i was gonna wear it but it's a little hot here today so i just have it on the chair um <laughs> i always keep that handy whenever i'm gonna run up on anyone that loves lost i throw the jumpsuit on but it's really a pleasure to be here tonight nice I guess I got to get um, out my stuff too, huh? Burnt. It's even burnt from the implosion. <laughs> Whoa. I love it. And it still smells like chocolate. Yeah. This is really a pleasure to be here with both <laughs> of you. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of both of your podcasts. And it's really wonderful to talk about Lost. I'm super excited. Um, people can find out about me at dvrpodcast.com. We're covering a bunch of stuff right now. What do we cover? We're covering... Bachelor in Paradise, if you can believe it. That's a lot of fun. Mine Hunter, Heath and I are doing that. And Ken and I are doing Veronica Mars. Um, but in October, Aaron and I, and Aaron was my original partner for Lost Mythos, are going to be continuing our Damon Lindelof Love Fest. We did the final season of The Leftovers, and we're all in on Watchmen. We're doing, I mean, I'm doing at least like two, three episodes a week, call ins. I, I'm so excited for this. You know, he just did a little press tour about it. And uh, he said it's really going to talk a lot about like social and cultural things that are happening, political things happening in America. And I just love Damon. So 
He's had I mean, a pretty good uh, post-loss career. I mean, I you know I look at it like what he controlled and what he was like in charge of, like the leftovers, and then other things he's contributed to that other people. It's been edited, whether it's the aliens or. Uh, you know, I think he had a little bit more control uh, with the with the film that came out. What was it that he wrote with? Uh, didn't he write that with Jeff Jensen, the Lost writer? Oh, you're talking about the. Uh, I know what film you're talking about. Like back in Prometheus? time. No, not Prometheus. Uh, it was, uh, like a time and George travel. Clooney. George Clooney was in it. Was the Disney movie? Yes. Um, oh, Tomorrowland. Yeah, Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland. Yes. Tomorrowland. Yeah, Tomorrowland. I think that he co-wrote that, didn't he? Then Damon co-write tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of that either. Uh, I was a little slow, but leftovers lost two of the best television shows ever invented. Well, I, I know I knew I, for it. I know when we were so I did a, a leftovers podcast with uh, Jay and Mike Bloom, and I actually said I said after season two I said if I'm Damon I stop because season two is perfect. And I go why take a chance on getting that backlash again? But season three was excellent, so. He pulled it off. I, I'm a coward. I would have said, okay, I'm done it too. Listen, I really, I have, I just have an affinity from that guy. He grew up like 15 minutes away from me in Teaneck, New Jersey. Uh, you know, we probably went to a lot of the same places. I just feel a kinship and I, I just love what he does and watching this episode. This was great to watch the pilot again. It's been a while. It was just so amazing, man. I just sunk right into it. So I'm very excited to be here. Thank All you. All right. Well, speaking of the pilot, did we want to jump right in? I, I personally, it. I haven't seen the pilot. In, I haven't seen probably an episode of Lost in probably three or four years. Wow. Jeez. It's It's been that long since I sat down. Could I, we started that rewatch and something happened. We stopped. And so whatever that was, that was, I said, you know what? The next time I watch Lost, I'm just, I'm just Jay. Gonna, yeah. I don't want to say that. I had some kids, you know, you're having young kids. Yeah, life happens. Can be a hassle. It's like Lost. Life New happens. job, you're traveling all over the place. So I don't want to throw Jay under the bus, but I'm backing it up over. But it's <laughs> not in Portland. <laughs> but when I was watching it last night, I was like going, oh my God, this is so good. Yeah. This is just so good. But I'll give you your guys' thoughts. I watch it about, I rewatched the series maybe about once a year or somewhere around there. And when you said uh, we're doing the rewatch, I'm like, cool, which episodes? And it's like pilot part one and two. I'm like, <laughs> not again. <laughs> um, it's probably episodes I've seen the most, but uh, it, it's funny. As soon as it starts, you kind of just get right back into it. Yeah. And uh, it's, yeah. it's really interesting seeing the characters at the beginning uh and especially knowing where they ended up six seasons later and being uh, dead the whole time <laughs> it's it it's so hard, hard. it's it so dead. hard to explain <laughs> to people what's going on I, it makes I, me so mad well you heard you like you've heard at the panel i go i don't i just don't do it anymore i go you, yeah. you can believe whatever you want to believe i just don't care yeah man i that is you know that's my one kind of pop culture thing i let it go when anybody makes fun of anything but when they make fun of the end of lost i at least just have to tell them you're wrong or watch it again but i totally agree with you i it, well it's been about i'll occasionally put on an episode have it on in the background uh you know when it switched from netflix to hulu for a little while i didn't have hulu so i couldn't do that but um, this was the first time I like sat down and really said, okay, I'm going to podcast about this. I'm paying attention to it. And I want to try to analyze it. Like if it was a show I'm just watched, like it was right. the last episode of Game of Thrones, whatever. And all I can say is this, this, can I curse this freaking show? It holds <laughs> up. It's so amazing. And again, I'm always shocked that this was on network television. That's always the thing I have to kind of remind myself. And they just, this pilot is amazing. The, the extensive use of natural out in the wilderness shooting. Now, of course, there's some sets and you can tell sometimes, but that's okay. But like they're running down the hill when the, and away from Smokey. They, when Jack turns the corner, they're on the beach. The whole, that whole, that, that, oh, that like uh, pleasure pain thing 
that Lost always gave you where the visuals are striking and beautiful and you just want to be on that beach, but then it's the most craziest, insane situation. Like, do you want to be on the beach? Yes, I still want to be on the beach. <laughs> it's so beautiful, but it's so crazy. I was just blown away. I mean, I, I didn't think I would get sucked in. I build a uh, little Gundam. Ralph, you must know about Gundam, right? Do you yeah. know about Gundam? So That's I'm a song, right? Gundam style? No, no. This, oh. is, uh, this is like uh, Gundam robots, man. Oh, okay, okay. They, they, fight, they fight those big kaiju that you podcast about, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I was I would thought, oh, I'll sit and build a Gundam, watch the show, because that's how I did like Game of Thrones rewatch. I didn't build anything. As soon as it started, I couldn't stop watching. I just sat back up on the couch and I was two hours. That was the end. And not for a moment was I bored or anything. <laughs> no, I agree. Because I, I remember when I first watched it, I Jay and I watched it. People think, well, did you watch it right away? I said, no, we missed the first two or three episodes. There once, like with people I work with, oh, you got to start from the beginning. I go, okay, I'll wait till it shows and reruns. Well, it never really showed. So Jay got the DVDs for season one, like, I think three days before or something like a real short time before the second season was going to start. I go, we're never going to be able to finish this before it starts. And I think we watched it in like three days. Yeah. And I can remember it. Like I said, when I was watching it last night, I said, cause there's, there's a lot of great pilots for TV shows, but most shows, even your great shows struggle to get going. I mean, it just, there's, yeah. that, there's that, you know, I don't know if I can watch and people say, Oh no, you gotta go back, back like the wire. It took me like four episodes ago. All right. I'm sold on this now. This one is like, like you're saying, where Jack's laying in the bamboo, he's and all of a sudden he he's he can't figure out what's going on. He wakes up, he runs because you know we don't know what he's running to because we can't hear anything, which was excellent directing and just how how they're doing that. And he runs and he looks and he, then you see the chaos going on, and so he runs and you know he's the Boy Scout, so he jumps into everything. But the way they set up the characters, I mean, you have John Locke and 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 Sawyer, who are probably two of the main characters in the show, and they're really just kind of background characters other than Sawyer probably towards the end of the second episode. Yeah. But it, it's because a lot I, the problem a lot of shows have when they have a big cast is they try to throw them all at you at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you're like going, okay, I'm I'm too confused. I can't like Flash Forward, I think, did that where they just say, I'm like, okay, who's who's that again? Who's that? This one, it was slow. You had Kate and Jack and you're trying to figure out what's going on. And like I said, it, the smoke monster, we didn't even see him. We mm -hmm. didn't know what it was. So yeah. best pilot in the history of television without a doubt. Yeah. Without I watched it. Uh, uh, I missed the first two episodes <laughs> and a friend of mine told me at work, he said, you should watch the show. It's great. Um, I had a TiVo, which was, you know, fairly advanced at the time. Yeah. That's pretty and, cool. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, you can go and set up a, a, a subscription through TiVo. And so I looked up lost and uh it was like a week after the i don't know if they aired on the same night pilot part one and two they might have aired on separate weeks no it was on the same night it was on the same night so the next friday the following friday they had put both of them together like a ten at night like an encore presentation and i had that sitting on my dvr and then the rest of them started kind of going like would like fill in the slot. So I had the pilot part one and two, and then um, the, the Kate episode uh, tabula rasa. Is that yeah. the first, the first one after this? Yes. Um, so those three were on there uh, and it, the show is only like two weeks old. So it was just sitting there. I didn't really, I, I didn't know if I was going to watch it or not. Um, <clears throat> my wife, or my wife now, she's my girlfriend at the time, Stevie, was um, getting ready. We we're going to go out. Uh, it was like Saturday. We we're just going to go do something. Um, and while I was waiting, I started watching the pilot. Because so I'm like sitting here bored. I'm, what am I going to do? I'll right. watch this thing my friend told me to watch. We've all been there. So I'm sitting there and I'm watching it. And I'm like, ah, shit. Okay, cool. This is neat. Okay. All right. And then the first flashback happens where you see Jack on the plane right. and you start, you start learning a little more about this guy. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting and different. Cause like, I don't know who any of these people are and it's clear 
right off the bat, I'm going to get to know who this guy is and I'm going to get to see this plane crash that I missed out, you know, 30 minutes before. And I remember pausing it and I just like stopped it, rewound it all the way back to the beginning. And then when Stevie was ready, uh, I said, come here, check out this show. And we sat there and watched pilot part one and two. We didn't leave the house. <laughs> um, and that was like the first, yeah, it was, it was, it was the Friday after the second episode aired the, uh, the, the Kate episode. That's awesome. So we got there pretty soon, like pretty early. And then what was cool was my TiVo had the ability to burn your shows onto a DVD, like a, a rewritable DVD. And I, I was able to fit two episodes per. So I would record them on the DVR, put them on DVDs and just keep them in a stack. And I would go back and rewatch them. And then nice. once, once the actual DVDs came out, the, the, you know, after the seasons were done, I would take that stack of DVDs and just send it out to the wild. I'd be like, here, watch this show. The discs are numbered and uh, you'll, you'll be able to like follow along. But, and I would say when you're done, just give it off to somebody else and it would just get passed around. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So we were, we were on about three weeks in, but we, we never really, we never really missed an episode from then on. Well, that shows you how good the pilot is. If it can change, yeah. it can change your plans for that night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, well, it was like an, it was like an early, it was like the early afternoon. It was like, uh, I, I started like at 10 AM and then we didn't end up leaving the house to like one or two in the afternoon. But it was, uh, I mean, man, it, it just like, it, it grabs you right away. And then you see the flashback and you're like, like I, you know, I was like so convinced that the rest was going to be awesome that I like decided to stop. And I rewatched <laughs> that first, however long it takes to get to that first flashback. I watched it all over again. Uh, I, think, I think it's like 25 minutes in. Yeah. 30 yeah. minutes in. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds well, right. I guess I'm the only one who was sitting in my house at what was it? 8 PM over an antenna because i didn't even have cable watching uh abc uh in new york the night it aired because i was super excited for lost i was a huge why? fan. what's that i was gonna say yeah why was that why were you because i was aware of it but i don't know i was a huge fan of matthew fox i love party of five Okay. I was not a TV person. Like I basically, I was really into TV when I was a kid. I went to college. I really stopped watching TV and I really didn't even, didn't start again until lost. I was working at world of video in Manhattan, best video store that ever was better than Kim's. I don't know if anyone, whenever I say New York, they talk about Kim's world of video is better, but, uh, I was getting in, I was so into film and I was starting to notice how television was getting better. And so I heard that Matthew Fox was going to be in this show. And I had heard from some people too, that this pilot was amazing. I had already heard that kind of working at world of video, doing a little PA work in the industry. People, the word was out that like, wow, they shot this huge pilot in Hawaii. There was stuff on the beat. People were like, this is not a normal network thing. So I literally like made sure I didn't have to work so I could be at home to watch it. You go, <coughs> I'm sorry, I got a cold. No, I actually told him. I said, <laughs> I said to my boss, Mitch, I worked at a video store, man. I said, lost is it's premiering mitch i gotta watch this show and he was like you're crazy foley i was like mitch i gotta do it come on and i wa i sat there and i was blown away i was like i can't believe i decided to like the first time i actually sat down and watched something on tv when it was premiering in years in like 10 years and it was lost and commercials too and commercials everything man and during the commercials i was like what the hell is this show is awesome i was sucked in and i just want to say one thing that really struck me from this pilot which is a lot of people talk about lost and they talk about oh it's a sci-fi show it's spiritual it's whatever but really this pilot proves it and shows it at its heart lost is an adventure right like oh, yeah. away they're on an adventure they get off the beach and they're like how can we get a better signal we got to go hike they're hiking they're going in the far they're like 
right away they're doing something, right? That's why for me, the later frustrations that Damon and Carlton had of forcing them off the island all the time with the backstories and the flashbacks and the 24 episodes mandated, I was always such a fan of anything that was happening on the island, I wouldn't miss it. You know, there's some things I don't always remember about the flashbacks, but if it happened on the island, I remember it. And it's just that adventure. So that's my my thing. I sat there and watched it and it made me get cable and get a DVR. <laughs> like <laughs> all this stuff was just so I could watch Lost. Yeah. And then I started watching other TV. So it basically podcasting every this like things you rarely say like, oh, it changed my life. I mean, I changed my life, but Lost was the impetus to get me into all of this, you know? And uh, it it's like started an adventure in my life. And that's why every time I watch this pilot, I'm just always reminded that it wasn't the mystery stuff that got me or even, I mean, I love the diversity. That was so important too. This came out in 2004. Right. It's Bush years. Saeed is from the Republican Guard. He mentions that. I was like, wow. That's actually a funny scene. Yeah, that was, but that was amazing. <laughs> I was sitting watching that on Indian Row in Jersey City three years after I had watched the towers fall down with my own eyes. That was like really powerful to me. You know, that really said something to me on a deep level. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I could go on and on, but I'll let someone else talk more. <laughs> Well, like you say, it's it's it, the, the to me it's an adventure, it's a sci-fi, but it's the characters, and they like I said, they did a great job of not just that's totally not rushing us. And no, here's all the characters we're throwing them at you. You know, you had Kate a lot, you had Jack a lot, and you had you know Charlie because remember Charlie, you know, yeah. I'm Charlie, I'm Charlie, I'm Charlie. But yeah. and you know, you had your your side character, Saeed, and you know Sawyer right away don't get along. So we know Sai, we we know that Sawyer is not going to be a, a good guy. But then you also had Jin, who I think for the first half of the season, season one, I went too far ahead. Yeah, I didn't like him. Yeah, and then you lost it. Did a great job well, again. I don't want too far ahead, but lost did a great job of switching these guys, these characters around. Yeah, and going okay now because because of you know like you said when you, I think uh, you mentioned the flashbacks, and that's what got me when we move for that's what sold me on the show was the flashbacks because then you get to learn more about the characters yeah. and where they're flawed what the issues are see i had to get sucked into that jack at first it was the adventure of it in the island you know and then i started oh my god these characters are it's like that it's like that was such a given that it snuck up on me you know but you you make a great point because uh, and I'll say this about Jin. You even see he's trying to give everybody the sushi and nobody wants it. Even Hurley's like, no, but he still has a heart, right? Like there was such a heart to each of the characters. Right. They tried to show a little bit of a vulnerability, even if they were tough or even like a lock mysterious. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the characters, they, they I, I was surprised, like you said, that lock is it's the orange and the Walt conversation. And right. that's basically all he did in the first two episodes. Mm -hmm. And he basically sums up the whole show because it's a game. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But it's, but my, he had, he had a great line because, you know, uh, Walt comes over to him and he's, you know, they're talking about checkers and the whole thing is, he, he goes, yeah, he goes, we don't have an, I think uh, Locke says, you don't have an accent. He goes, oh, we moved around a lot. My mom died. And, and you think Locke would say, oh, I feel bad for you. He goes, no, you've had a rough month, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, so you're th almost thinking, okay, yeah. who's this Locke guy? He's kind of an ass. Yeah, that was great, man. You're right. And then the way Kate reacted to his smile, too, I forgot. Yeah. yeah. I always remember the iconic orange smile, but then Kate is like, what the hell? She's like repulsed. Right. The murderer is repulsed. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> Whose handcuffs are those? <laughs> Where'd you get those handcuffs? Walt. And Walt is the second word ever uttered in Lost. Yeah. The first is son, and the second is Walt. Yeah. Right? Walt! <laughs> <laughs> Walt. And the whole, that kid from the beginning is like, Dad, all right, enough already. I get it. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, at least you know my name. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Where's the dog? Oh, man. 
um, what was I was looking at some other stuff. Oh, but I wanted to say is that it do, does or does it made me think as if I was viewing this like something new, the consistency of the characters. Cause when we get to the finale, you see people, people, um, make fun blame or they make fun of loss. Oh, they made it up as they were going along, which I always find to be like the most anti-creative thing anyone could ever say, because everything is made up. Every Any year. film TV show is improv changed on the set in editing. It doesn't matter, but the characters remain so on point from this pilot to the very end. Yeah. You know, like they're the, the kind of like the two sides of Kate, where she's so strong. And even when she's like half naked in the ocean, it's like a power pose. But then a couple, like 20 minutes later, she's like, Jack, Jack, <laughs> you know, like that was Kate. I'm going Jack. I'm yeah. going. It's like oh, they're already wow. married. I don't, I don't know. The other thing is how many times are they going to fight about whether she's going somewhere or not? Yeah. And she right. said it right from the start. I'm going. <laughs> Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Um, I did think of you, Jack, because I had a crackpot theory as I was watching. Okay. And I know this was an early theory, but when they run away from Smokey in this pilot part two, and then they're looking for Jack and he co comes walking back and, he, and he's just like, oh, I just jumped in the bushes and, and ran away. And then I remember later it became a theory that Jack was never Jack. Yeah. <laughs> he jumped into the bushes that was smoky right remember because he was supposed to die yeah so yeah. it's like i wonder if they played with that idea because i know they put stuff like that like that's kind of the way jj writes and damon kind of adopted that a bit where they'll leave it open almost so they can go back if they want right well they wanted michael keaton to play yeah Jack. right yeah. so they did you have watched the show if it was michael keaton Instead of Matthew Fox, I don't know. You want to know? That's a great <laughs> question. I would not have been as as amped to watch it. I might have been. I might have been more amped to watch it. I think he was Batman. Really interesting. I. It's just he's, I he's, loved he's Mr. Bomb. <laughs> I thought that Matthew Fox on Party of Five was like the most kind of emotion. He was like the '90s dude, like vulnerable and what he becomes in Lost, playing Nirvana. He, he's a good crier. He's vulnerable. He cries. That's he's a he's like. He's like a man, but he's has feelings, you know. That's kind of how I am. <laughs> <laughs> I have feelings. I pr I, th I think probably more people would have watched if Michael Keaton was on. Oh, yeah. I think so. Yeah. But but I'm glad they didn't kill off Jack because obviously he's so important to the show. Yeah. But what did you, what did you think of uh, uh, what what we had? Uh, well, Hur Hurley was big in it, and it was funny what he didn't. They, st they started doing the names like was it pilot, the, the second episode of the part two they yeah. really weren't using names in the beginning it was just uh i think saeed and and hurley gave their names and jack and hurley but uh oh i no. thought you were sawyer giving hurley names oh yeah no 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 I, yeah, we, well, we had that that's that set the tone for that one what do you call him uh, jumbo or something like that lardo lardo <laughs> that's what it was J jumbo comes later on <laughs> Sawyer's the best man. Our Han Solo, right? Yeah, yeah. Angry Han Solo. Yeah, but, he, but as we see, he has later on. He has a re the spoiler. He has a reason for it. If you haven't seen yeah. it, I, yeah. I still I still come by one theory though, and it's more later on. But the Marshall and Kate, they had something more going on than they that that never got played out. You know how people complain about how Dharma never got complete. That that story, there's there's more to that story than we know because he's just too obsessed, and he goes, yeah, he, he lied, she lied to him, and all this different stuff. So there's more going on than she just he just has to get, you know, someone runs away from him, he's a marshal, he's got to, he's got to get that person back. Yeah. It's it's personal for him, and and they never really. That's one thing that always bugs me because I said it from the start. I go, okay, what's their relationship? What did they do before? And you see, you know, some of the. Other episodes, we'll see, fla you know, flashbacks and stuff. But to me, they didn't really. Am I just, am I just seeing things, looking for something? No, I think you're right, and I think that's an example of one of the things that they kind of left open ended. That I think that they did throughout this show, and it was a result of that huge episode order. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know, 
I, I I've read some interviews with Damon and, uh, you know, before Carlton came on board, just the frustration of having to make it be so long, you right. know, I mean, cause look at, look at it, honestly, guys, if it was today and loss was 10 to 12 episodes a season, they could have done that. You know, they could have formatted it like these premiere shows. And as we got towards the end, that's kind of what they wanted to do. So I'll ask you both. Would it have been better if they had been on cable or just doing 10 to 13 at the time? Cable? At the time, no. No, I think the money was in, yeah. in the networks. And I think the cable is what it is now because of shows like Lost. Yeah. So you're not going to, I think that, um, uh, I heard the story about how this pilot got made. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard this or not, but I guess whoever would, there was going to be a changing of the guard Yeah, yeah. at ABC and the head of ABC kind of did a big F you to the company by green lighting this script and giving them an insane amount of money to go to Hawaii and shoot this thing. Oh, really? So this, it was just a, it was Lloyd Braun, the same guy, yeah. the same guy who was behind like sign for like all these great shows. This guy has, but he's, he's the one who says previously on lost. That's <laughs> yeah. his so he, he did this thing where it costs so much money that even after he left or got fired or whatever, they had to keep, they had to air it because it cost them so much money. They didn't want to take a loss. So that kind of forced the network to put this show on the air. So it, it's it, at the time, like you, you think about it and how TV was before lost and how it's changed since like, none of this would have happened if that dude didn't just like, dump a bunch of money onto the script so we're th we should thank that with lloyd Bra is it lloyd yeah i believe his name's lloyd braun yeah so he, isn't that a character that's a character on seinfeld isn't it i think it was george costanza's uh, arch enemy <laughs> i think it was actually yeah he's very he's he's one of these dudes who behind the scenes is responsible for giving like thousands of people a career and had and i he worked in a lot of places but ralph that's a great point because I was going to say something similar, which is like, it's the struggle that makes it what it is. Mm -hmm. And I, I really believe that like lost it's the journey, not the destination. And yeah. I think that it is responsible for so much of this. I mean, even the three of us sitting here talking on the YouTube, mm -hmm. where, which has now become, I mean, fandom is now a lifestyle for it's a religion for people. It's acceptable, yeah. you know? And we kind of started off doing it for nothing, hanging out, talking. You know what I mean, and like now it's like a culture and a business, and you know, and for me too, it's like my career. It's just amazing what it kind of spread. And to me, it's so beautiful because, like you say, Jack, it's always the whole show is always about disparate people to working together for a common cause, and it's really about love. And that's mm -hmm. why I think it's beautiful. Like lost is the greatest fandom. Well, well what's, what's kind of funny is you mentioned the commercial breaks earlier. Um, while the pilot episode part one and two and tabula rasa were sitting on my DVR, my two roommates independently of each other, both ended up hitting play on lost and they got into it. And even though we had a DVR, we got to the point where we would all make sure we were home on Wednesday night to watch <laughs> Lost all together. And you would use those commercial breaks to discuss what just happened. <laughs> and it, it, what's funny is in doing so, like it was around this time where uh, I quit my job. It was a, the second season of Lost. Uh, I quit my job and me and my friends were just obsessed with the show. And so I'm sitting here on my computer uh, writing. I, I was, I was writing a screenplay and I needed something to listen to while I kind of did prep work and stuff. And I found out about podcasts and I'm like, well, I understand what podcasts are, but what do I want to listen to? 
like, what am I like? I, I like looked up Star Wars and there's a couple things and I'm like, but like right now I'm really into Lost and I want to know more about Lost. And so I typed in Lost and uh, three of them came up. First was the transmission. Mm -hmm. I listened to the transmission and I assumed that it was produced by ABC. I didn't know. I knew what a podcast was. I didn't know how they were made. And then I started listening to Jay and Jack and I'm like, okay, these, these are like just guys. Yeah. Obviously, obviously they're not trained professionals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you were, but it was kind of like set up that way. Um, uh, it was, it was a little more loose. And then the third one was make your own kind of music with Scott and Steve. Oh yeah. And, and Craig and Dylan who did that show were definitely more rough around the edges. Um, uh they didn't they didn't censor themselves uh they used whatever language they were using they left it all in and then i realized oh these are just people <laughs> all <laughs> of these are just people <laughs> abc abc didn't sanction any of these things yeah so i'm like this is kind of neat these are just fans and so they, I saw, so I'm like, okay, so you go to the websites and the forums and you start interacting with other people. And so now, um, after, you know, I sit there and watch the show with my friends and discuss it during commercial breaks. And at the end I would jump online and like, talk about the stuff we had talked about, talked about, you know, see what other people say. And then the next day I would talk to my roommates about what I read on the internet. Uh, there were screenshots you can like it was crazy it was just it's, like it's incredible yeah it was a snowball effect and it was just like um uh you know it's it's funny because if it were on cable today none of us are staying none of us are waiting wednesday to to watch it live now you have east coast feeds and west coast feeds you have social media and that's going to get in the way of how you watch it right um you 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 with lost it was like i didn't have any issues with spoilers yeah because cool. i didn't have i didn't have twitter um <laughs> but, but the thing is what was funny was once twitter started coming into the fold in 2008 there's like a couple of years where lost and twitter overlapped um, I found that spoiler spoilers weren't a problem. I feel like there was discussions, but nobody really, I never had any fear of getting spoiled on an episode because wow. I would have three hours before it started, you know, between, between, right. but now there's so much stuff and so many things you get inundated with that, um, that, you know, I don't know if I would be able to, to, to deal with social media on a weekly basis i didn't watch game of thrones or or any or breaking bad when it when it aired <clears throat> but i don't i think i would get anxious that i would get spoiled on stuff now um if if lost were to make a comeback uh i would want it to be on a streaming service where they can just so dump like, them all so dump like, them all at the same time like so now. that yeah it will so be. that east coast and west coast gets it at the exact same time i'm there for that it but would, I don't think I'm going to go and tune in on a network. No, that will never. It, it, if they do it, it'll be on a streaming service. Disney it, Plus. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing. I mean, my dream, I've, I mean, we did some podcasts where we talked about it. Lost the Dharma years. A young couple and their family come to the island. And then we have another one, Law, Law. I want Hurley back on the island. That's what. I, <laughs> oh, wait, spoiler alert. Um, that was great though, man. He's already there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, that was a great story. Yeah. That's how mm -hmm. I got into podcast. I mean, the first two were the transmission and Jay and Jack. Yeah. And those were my first, that was the second and third podcast I ever did. Now, if, 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 you, if you, if you don't know out there, Ralph designed our logo. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. He's the one yeah. that he, he sent it in. That's awesome. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, my first two ever episodes of Lost Mythos was first I interviewed Ryan and Jen, and then I interviewed Jay and Jack. And the reason why I wanted to do it, I wanted to talk to other people who were doing it. And just because I thought it's kind of like the spirit of Lost. Mm -hmm. That's why the fandom's the best, because yeah. like the fandom is about the show. 
like no offense to I, I i spent and jack i know you did too so long just game of thrones season eight like that show is about like killing people and power and and the fandom is kind of like that the <laughs> yeah, fandom they're, they're, it's, like, an, it's an angry fandom it's, yes it is it's a very angry fandom and the lost fandom is not it's like you love lost i love law hey you everybody like everybody just wants to talk to everybody it's, you know it, it came at the perfect time too because everyone was able to become fans yeah. and then we were able to come together on the internet kind of under the radar yeah. and and with the advent of twitter towards the end we were able to fully come as one big giant group just come together and then as the show was ending you start getting the kind of not diehard fans who yeah. would poke their head in and kind of we, we, we got the kind of tail end of like that uh that sort of anger where people were uh bitching and moaning about the finale but i feel like uh those are people that just kind of showed up and were being jerks they're not true fans maybe i'm sure there's some definite true fans out there uh that don't like the finale but i feel like for the most part every year when we go to san diego um for the panel it's always such a positive vibe. You never hear anybody talk ill of the show. Uh, there, I, I mean, the I have the same gripe I've had since season three, and that's further instructions is a hot mess of an episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, but it's that's like the only thing. Like when you can, when people are complaining about whole seasons of Game of Thrones, or I hear things like the last season of Dexter is like unwatchable. And I hear all these things. I'm like, Terrible. my only complaint about Lost is I don't like the flashback in one episode. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of uh, uh, Beyond the Sea, but I mean, I love it. Come on, that's two episodes. Yeah. I'm uh, with Beyond the Sea for me. It's I I like that, and I'm glad I have that information. I wish it was placed somewhere else. Yeah, most people wish it was the start of the season, not the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been nicer. But I mean, I mean, that's for however many episodes, what is it, 111 or 117 or however many episodes Lost is, to really just not like uh, one episode's flashbacks and then another episode, its placement in the series. Uh, it's pretty nice. It's pretty, it's a, it's, it's great. It's not, you know, it's, and uh, I've never really come across a, uh, fan of lost who's like super negative and i mean i guess they wouldn't be fans but you, you never hear anybody complaining about so and so i i've never really had a problem with nikki and paulo um no i love that episode are you because it was, but, it was but so fun people had an issue with them being included into the season and pretending like they're there the whole time but like dr arse ethan <laughs> rom like there's other characters that kind of show up Yes, you know. Well, so, I, I, I still say with Nikki and Paula, what they should they should have just been on another another part of the plane. Yeah, they they could have been in the, the front of the plane, and and the, that's how they should have worked it. But I got spoiled on that on the, the death of that from a listener, but not on not on purpose. But I was I used to answer all the emails, and I used to answer up until it used to take me almost to lost. So we would get so many and I would, I was playing phone calls and sometimes I'd star him for Jay so he could know which one's a good phone call. And they go, yeah, you know, I, I was so, sh it was from Canada and they, they got it an hour earlier than I did. Ah. And so I'm listening, I go, yeah, I couldn't believe that they buried Nikki and Paulo alive. I'm like going, what, what is this guy talking about? I'm like, I go, oh, damn it. <laughs> so the whole episode I'm watching Jay and my wife, they're like going, and they go, oh. I go, I already knew that. I got spoiled. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get too bothered by stuff because I have to say that I was always sensitive to the episode thing. When Damon and Carlton finally came out and when they forced the end of the show and the limited number of episodes, I was so excited and happy because I you could feel that that mm -hmm. they were spreading things out because of the oh, yeah. that, but that's okay because they learn from it. And you know, we got a lot of great stories that otherwise we wouldn't have got. Yeah. That Season I three starts off a little rocky where you have, uh, the people split up 
on the Hydra Island, you have Jack and, and Kate in the cages with Sawyer and stuff. And oh, the, the way episodes, the pods, right? Yeah. Where yeah. they, where they released like what it was like six episodes. And then we're, there was another hiatus and it was like yeah. uh, that, that made things really tough. And you'll find like on the rewatch. Cause like I said, I watch it, you know, probably every year. Um, those episodes aren't as bad when they're all presented back to back. Cause I think one of the issues is, is you don't see like Hurley <laughs> until like the third episode of that season. Yeah. And when you're watching it week to week, that's three whole weeks. And you're like, well, I only have six episodes in this pod. I'm halfway through this pod and I haven't seen Hurley yet. Yeah. You so think, I think maybe going back to, I never thought about this till you brought it up, but maybe people hated those episodes or disliked them more because we had more time to dissect them and complain about them. I think I remember that for the next. So maybe that's what it was. I think it was dude. I remember that. I remember that time and it definitely was that. And I think that there was, but I want to say going back to the pilot, Jorge is so amazing in this episode. Like just even the first time you see him, just the looks on his face, the mm -hmm. casting is so amazing. Uh, I just had this, I just, I had, I have some notes in front of me and I just had, I had to, I had to shout him out because even the, the part I remember is when Jin offers him the sushi and he's like, no way, man. <laughs> like, I'm again, starving, but, uh... <laughs> like that lost sensibility. Like when Locke was like, you had a rough week. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you, man, it's just the Jersey in me. That is so Jersey. And it, that was always in the show where it was like, yes, it's very emotional show. It's dramatic, but also people had the ability to just be like careless like that. Mm -hmm. Like you think Curly was supposed to be the nice guy. Like you think they'd note that on ABC. Like why is he refute? Why is he being mean to this guy? He's supposed to be the nice guy. Well, you know, but it, was, know? He, was, he, was he mean to him? He was kind of doing it. He, he, he was nice about it. Yeah, no, I agree. And we see that. Yeah. But it was like it was for network TV, even at the time that so much rights to type, it was allowing people to kind of be human. And, mm -hmm. and, and I just appreciate, and he was so natural in that, that it was just the cast is so amazing. Even like the first shot of Sawyer, I think it's 20 minutes in after everything is settled down on the beach or 15 or 20 minutes before they cut to commercial, they do a bunch of like silhouetted shots of Claire on the beach. Jack is standing there. Locke is on the beach and then Sawyer smoking a cigarette. And it's the first time you see Sawyer. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's like the most beautiful shot. And all he has to do is sit there and smoke a cigarette and you know exactly who he is. Mm hmm. Like it's just perfect casting and act. Everybody just fit. It just all worked like magic. Yeah. And, and another thing I think helped the show too is a huge cast, but they didn't seem to have huge egos. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I wasn't there behind the scenes, but it just seemed like you didn't hear. For the most part, I feel like a lot of them were unknown. Yeah. I think Terry O'Quinn, Matthew Fox might be the only cast members that were sort of established well, yeah. or that at least I had seen. He, in, uh, he was in um, Lord of the Rings. Right? Oh, Dominic Monaghan. Yeah. And Harold Perrineau, I think was on. Oz. Oz. Yeah, Oz. that's true. Right. But it was, but it was, but I think I, but no superstars. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, Fox was by far, I think for TV, he was like on the yeah. ads. They were like Matthew Fox. Yes. I didn't watch party of five. So I didn't uh, Great I didn't show, Jack. You should go back and watch it, man. It's so maybe I'll do a rewatch after lost. Cause I got a <laughs> beautiful show. I'm telling you, it'll make me cry, man. A lot. So, he, he did even more crying on that. I'm telling you that dude was crying like 15 times an episode on party of five. He is a great crier. Well, I used to do a, uh, uh, a contest and that was always a thing when will jack cry <laughs> or something yeah. like that. and he got me every time every time and he drinks so well too like just the, he's always shaking the glass right how many like when i when they were from his dad oh man every, <laughs> when they're showing the repeat of like you know charlie running down the aisle in the plane jack right you just, man, you can't help but think of all the stuff that's going to happen and how they're going to talk about that and go through it again. It's just, 
It's so, and uh, what's her name? Cindy. Yeah. I was just about ready to say something about her. Yep. You was, was she better at better looking as an Australian or an American? Because later on, she's she's she loses the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler for those people. Oh, no. she was she was hiding out, man. I always th I always thought that was one of my theories that she actually was another. No, oh, she was yeah. definitely, and also this is the episode. And don't you hear when Jack is waking Rose up? She says she says Dharma, Dharma. Oh or, yeah, Dharma. You didn't hear that, Jack? <laughs> That's what Rose I, is saying. I, I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Dharma, Jack is right. Yeah, well, they, I was so close because I remember when they. Uh, I know we're getting way ahead of us, but when they have, you know, where a lot of them went actually went and worked for Dharma. I said, "Yeah, I know. Finally, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it." And they retired. I go, "Come on, man, dude! I was with you the entire time, man. I always th I thought that was one of your best. And they so, should have done it." So, with this rewatch, is there a way for you to do Jack's crackpot theory of the week? You know, we did that on the the couple. We we've done like uh, we did like three rewatches or whatever it was. And I go, look, I'm done. I, <laughs> there's nothing else. I mean, I I mean, nothing happened in this watching the pilot that I, I don't remember. It just mm -hmm. brought back memories of like said the Marshall and Kate Rose. Okay, her she I guess she didn't really go too much into this, but uh, but what well, one of my theories was this, the plane crash was staged because nobody survives that. There's no there's no way anyone survives. Yeah, there's no way, and I'm like going. I go, so they had it had to be staged, mm -hmm. and and just of course that didn't happen. We found out there's other things behind it, but that was what two of my theories that uh, the marshal was more involved with Kate, and it had to be staged because there's no way you could live. Yeah, I think a lot of people with the marshal uh, got more wrapped up in what Kate did as opposed to uh, they're like more into the destination than the journey or the the yeah so i think people are more interested in her yeah i know about uh, what she did and it kind of but maybe on this rewatch you'll find a little bit more yeah i know it bugs people because that's i think the opposite like okay why were they why was he so obsessed with her mm -hmm. I mean, why, why? I mean, I get it. You know, you, I always thought that was a part of it, Jack. I, 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 I read that into it myself and I, I, I mean, I probably misremember him saying I'm in love with you <laughs> like in my own mind. It's been so long, but I totally, I think that that's there, you know, he, he says, he says on the plane, I think he says, you know, I've, I've heard your stories before or something, something to that effect where, you know, you, you've lied to me before. I don't believe you and all that different stuff. And, Anyway, we'll never get, maybe we'll get it on the reboot or something like that. Uh, that's the one thing I have to say that if they, I hope they continue the story, not retell it. Mm -hmm. I think that would be rather boring. And plus it's in HD. You know what I mean? Like it looks great. Again, I have to compliment the cinematography. I think it was Larry Fong who shot yeah. it. The cinematography is amazing. And that's again and again, that's what blew me away is that they yeah. actually were shooting in natural locations it was a and sh the cliff that they show they got to sh do that twice both ways coming and going yeah. <laughs> that was amazing it was just so beautiful so well that's almost like the perfect group to go on the hike to yeah. get the trans i mean you had sawyer and 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 uh saeed who hate each other you know you got uh what's her name um I'm drawing a blank on her name, Boone Shannon. and uh, Shannon, who yeah. Shannon is, is just waiting to be rescued, sunning on the beach. And then you got Kate, of course. Kate's going. Kate's not staying behind. I'm <laughs> going on that hike. Yeah, but, uh, yeah it's just a perfect, Unchar of course, Charlie, because Charlie's going because, of course, uh, Shannon asked him to go. Of course, he's going to go, right? Yeah. yeah. Char and the music, too. I got to give a shout out. Man, do, 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 do. Like just everything. Yeah. So adventure, and you know what? I, I I don't know if I mentioned this so many podcasts, but I remember the in this pilot, it hit me again of it having a Planet of the Apes feel. Did yeah, anyone yeah. else ever get that? Like you know the sounds, you like you know, everything. It just yeah. gave me that feeling. There was an I went to a uh, uh, I went to a concert. Thanks to Jack. <laughs> And thanks to the hurricane that never really did anything to his house. Oh, you know what? But uh, I ended up with uh, with Jack's tickets to a concert, 
And during the concert, it was a lost concert. Uh, Giacchino introduced um, one of the musicians and as a percussionist, really old man had to have been in his late eighties. And he had a bunch of like crazy stuff set up on racks and with like these crazy hanging bells and stuff. And uh, he was the percussionist on the original Planet of the Apes score, wow. Jerry Goldsmith score. Wow. So there, the what's funny is I know, I, I know, that. yeah, I know Giacchino is a big fan of the original Planet of the Apes. Of course, he's gone on to score a couple of Planet of the Apes movies himself. He, um, he mentioned that, and this is, I find amazing. I don't know if this is uh, 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 applies to the pilot. But he said uh, during the entire production of the show, he scored every single episode. No one else scored a a single note um, of the show. Uh, And not only did he score every single episode, he didn't do any spotting sessions with the directors of the episodes. They just handed him the episodes with, little to no notes like there may be script notes but i guess he didn't i don't think he read the scripts because he liked the show so much he wanted to watch it cold oh wow and so no one gave him direction as far as what to do so everything in the show that you hear from michael giacchino and like i said it was probably different for the pilot uh but everything he did on that show every single note is him he uh, had no notes, so he he got to compose this entire series without anybody meddling with him. That's I'm so glad you said that because doesn't that show you how now how fandom is where someone will be like, oh, the music was like this, they were trying to say this, and then it's like, mm-hmm. no, you don't understand how complicated it can be to make a TV or film. <laughs> like yeah. a lot of times, the communication is not as clear as you think it is. There's not like a mandate. Dude, yeah. there's a bunch of creative people working together and that yeah. shows you that that's like that methodology could kind of give it a certain life you know what's what's great about this first season too is um we get some basic lost themes you mentioned the the theme the hollywood and vines when they go on their adventure they usually save that for, or he usually i'm not they he usually saves that theme for finales when they go on their final trek to do whatever their main mission right. is um he has like sort of a a, a main loss theme there's just, there's a couple of like main overarching themes in the pilot part one and part two uh what's great about lost is devoting each episode to a different character that's when Giacchino starts developing individual pe- individual themes for the characters and as the series progresses everybody has their own specific theme so you can hear there'll be a conversation between jack and sawyer they won't mention kate by name they'll just say her and Giacchino will be able to play her theme yes. so you know who they're talking about and what's it's just amazing that uh, uh when i'm listening to my music on shuffle and all like last night this happened and it's claire's theme And I'm like, I know this is Claire's theme because I watched Lost. And it's amazing how many characters there are on Lost. And even when Ben Linus comes into the fold, he has his own theme. And Juliet and all these people, Richard Alpert, all these people, Jacob, everybody has their own theme. But what's great is they're all so recognizable. And uh, it's it's nice that he was able to, uh, from the very first frame to to the very last frame, Uh, He got to score the entire thing on his own without anybody getting in the way. And I think the score, I mean, if anything is like the one thing, if you hate the show or not, you know, I think that everyone can agree that the music's amazing. Yeah. Well, there's no, there's no way around it. No, I I think that goes to the pilot. There's it's, it's not, it's flawless. Yeah. Great. I mean, both episodes, part one and two. I mean, how, how often do you get, the, okay, the show is great. I like the directing, that music. God, I wish they would turn the music down. So there was nothing wrong. I, I, I found no. nothing wrong with it. And I've seen probably the pilots part one and two. 100. So so the way you were excited about Matthew Fox doing the show, I was excited about Michael Giacchino because I was a fan of his since the original Medal of Honor. Uh, fantastic music for that video game. And I had sort of followed his career up until that point. And when I saw his name in the main credits, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. 
But then he showed up every week after week. I'm like, this doesn't happen. <laughs> this does not happen, especially since he, um, around the same time as Lost, did his first film score, which was The Incredibles, which was a huge success. And then he got an Academy Award for Up, yet week after week, every single week, he did the score for Lost yeah. with a full orchestra. And a it's, great and a great job. It's have, so insane. It's a, yeah. I have to shout out uh, our good friend uh, Matt, who had a show called Keys to Lost, where he mm -hmm. did segments on Giacchino's music mm -hmm. every week and went over it. That was great. I mean, so many great podcasts. That is a, that's such that's so cool to find out about the methodology yeah. behind it, and that's cool that you were attracted to the music there because it's something that lost help teach me more about it like you were saying uh -huh. themes i had only noticed that before in twin peaks that everyone mm -hmm. had a theme mm -hmm. and it, that it was lost brought that back for me to kind of notice that stuff yeah. you know the intricacies of everything because like you're saying jack it was so perfect it made me more interested in wanting to find even though i was that was my job i was working at world of video plus i'm making movies and and working on sets but it was like Lost just had it was such a shining example of everything that it really brought me in and it just kind of brought it all together, baby. Oh. Yeah. All right. That could be a perfect spot to end this. What do you think? <laughs> because I, I, I have no story of why I, I, I don't have an actor or music or anything. <laughs> I just was told to watch it, watch it and fell in love with it. So. Oh, wait, I have one more story. Okay. When you were mentioning the commercials, I was thinking. I don't know. Does anyone remember there used to be a lost podcast that their gimmick was that they would watch it live and record during the commercials. Do you remember this? And it was like, that was their whole show. I don't know. There no, was I don't, I don't remember gimmicks, but that was the, I remember, I just want, I just start remembering about how it was also for podcasting. People came up with the craziest ideas to do. And while we're talking about commercials, I was like, man, there was some show that like they would run. They would go, okay, it's the first commercial break. Oh my God. Why did, oh wait, it's coming back on. And that would be the whole podcast. I think I, think I probably, cause I listen, I think I listened to all the lost podcasts out there. Oh man. At it's least once or twice. I, I would, I would answer the emails by listening to the podcast. Yeah. I just mm -hmm. pop the next one on and so yeah, there was a lot of great podcasts out there. But if you, anyone out there gets a chance, if, Giacchino does a loss, his lost concert. It's, uh, it's, I think it's called, we have to go back. Um, do yourself a favor and try to get to that show. I did try no matter you try. No, <laughs> but, um, I've seen it three times now and, uh, I'm not kidding you. Like it, even if you don't fully understand the impact of the music, Go to this concert and bring some tissues. And I'm not I'm not kidding you at all. Um right. Right. Is, as, as soon as box or for you. <laughs> for yourself. Because okay. like I'm 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 not kidding. So the last time I went to the concert was I in Ireland. Um and before the show, I was like, oh shit, I don't have any Kleenex. And so we had a big group of us, and I, I was just like asking her, I'm like, hey, do you guys have Kleenex? And one of my friends looked at me and they're like, What do you need Kleenex for? And I'm like, I'm going to cry. I'm letting you guys know I'm going to cry. Um, you, you, you may not, even if you don't pay attention to the music, as soon as it starts, as soon as that concert starts, oh, man. you're going to get six seasons of emotions flooded on you at once. It is insane. Um, and then there's a couple moments where like they do the boat raft sequence where wow. they play the footage, they play the footage while they play, uh, the orchestra plays it and it's just not a dry eye in the house. Yeah, I, I, and then, uh, I see your point. I would, I'd be crying too. Oh, and then the I, last two, I had a tear watching the pilot. Just little moments yeah. make me remember, man. The music is amazing. Oh, um, the, when we went in Ireland, uh, they recorded, uh, that, uh, concert and I, think somehow some way they're gonna he's gonna put it out 
Oh, okay. I don't know when um, or how it's going to be presented or whatever. But if you get a chance to go live, um, I didn't get tickets to the show that Jack gave <laughs> me the tickets for because I'm like, oh, it's like 86 bucks a ticket or something. <laughs> um, worth it. Sounds like I know. I, know, I think Jack's might have been a little bit more. Yeah, we we paid a little more for that because uh, we want to be, we want to be down lower because we're old. I'm I'm older. My wife's older. But I'm going to let you know that that venue that you that you got tickets for not a bad seat in the house. Amazing intimate theater. Uh, I'm I'm not kidding you. Uh, even if it's like a state or two over, make a six hour drive if you have to. Um, you won't forget it. Believe me. Believe me. You won't forget it. Look at that. You're, I know your guest uh, is Bill Kava coming on next week, Jack. He is. He's been to many of those. Yeah. No one to it. He's been to many. Yeah. Of them. And, and Karen I, are going to be here next. Last week. time he went, I think on Facebook he was going live, and I saw it and scrolled it. Took me about three seconds to start crying. So <laughs> you are not alone, my friend, because that yeah. is so everything. That's yeah. Wild. I grew up. I grew up listening to film music. I uh, when I was three years old. Or four years old, my mom wouldn't let me go see Raiders of the Lost Ark because she thought it was too scary for me. So she got me the tape on Columbia House uh, in the mail. And so ever since then, I've been a huge film score fan. Um, I'm going to do a little plug because Jack's trying to end this thing. No, uh, no, but I have a Patreon page. And if anyone knows like about it, it's only a dollar. <laughs> it's one dollar <laughs> and that unlocks all i think 45 to 50 audio podcasts as soon as you spend that one dollar um and if you do two dollars uh it unlocks all 54 uh audio and video podcasts um but i do a series on there called lightsabers and light motifs that i'm really proud of uh where i um, go over all of the themes uh, for Star Wars. So all of the character themes for Star Wars. Nice. So much like Lost, John Williams wrote themes for almost every character. And I've been going through movie by movie in release order. And I'm up to episode seven. My next episode next month will be for Rogue One, which is the first non-John Williams film score, uh, which was composed by Michael Giacchino. That's right. Because you've, so, you've been on Owen Brew's Barbecue podcast I yeah, have. Yeah. Yeah. Listening, you talk about going to Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, yeah. I have a Listen. I have a two hour episode on my Patreon. Once again, one buck will get you like forty five episodes. Where can they Where can they find this? What, what do they have to look? You can go to patreon.com slash casino skunk or just go to casino yeah. It's the Casino Skunk Secret Society. Uh, only twenty eight people know about it, <laughs> so I'd like more people to come know about it. Uh, all that money goes directly back into the podcast for like my hosting of uh, Kaiju Pod, uh, Darmalars. All right, let's do a podcast and all that stuff. So nice. it's it, it's I'm really proud of that show. Uh, Jack has been on an episode, I believe. I believe so. I think so. I, have? I think we. I, yeah, I think I, I think I had you, oh, Jack. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure I had you. I know Jay episode. has. I don't know if I. I don't know if I have. Maybe I have, and I just. But, but, I but uh, I th the last two. You know what it is? The last two Comic Con panels are up. Oh, okay. you you posted on Hank, Crazy Hank TV. I did the year before. Did not get posted anywhere on jandjack.com. So if you want to hear the 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 San Diego Comic Con panel from. Uh, a year ago, uh, that's on there. Oh, okay. So, but it, it's it's a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to talking about uh, Giacchino's music. And if you want to hear Michael Giacchino talk about Ultraman, cool. Go to the Kaiju Podcast dot com because me and Jorge recorded an episode with Michael Giacchino about an episode of Ultraman, which is available for free on YouTube, so you can watch that episode and and listen to that show. And we we talk about yeah yeah, Giacchino's a rad dude. He, he, I, he's a, he's a really nice guy. I I really want to get him on for the Rogue One episode. I, so stay tuned to CasinoSkunk.com or I, at CasinoSkunk and. I, I guess, well, since we're going along here anyway, <laughs> we were at, we were at the I think it was a Comic Con panel, and someone said Giacchino is up front. No, and that's that was me. Yeah, and so we start walking yeah. up there, and I turn around, and everybody else is gone. 
it's just me. But then he got up, <laughs> he got up and left before I got there. But then later no, on, was, I was at a, it, yeah, it was you. Yeah. Cause you wanted to, I go, Let's well, go this on. is, this is what happened. So it's before <laughs> the lost, it's before the lost panel, right? right. We're, we're all in, in, uh, I think it was ballroom 20 at the time. Right. Uh, this is 2006. Cause that was the year Stevie went. Uh, so this was between season two and three. Um, we're all, everyone's, all these lost fans came up. Uh, the Dharma Lars was only like a couple episodes in and people came up and said, you're Ralph from Dharma Lars. And I'm like, this is weird. So the whole lost community is there and it's loud. And I noticed Giacchino all the way up front. Cause we're sitting like 20, 20 rows back. He's all the way up front by a VIP section. And I decide I'm going to yell out real loud, Giacchino, which I did. At that moment, for some reason, everybody in the auditorium had just quieted down right before I said it. And he just looked up and I pointed at him. He pointed at me, gave thumbs up. And then that's when you guys, you guys went over. I guess I should have gone too, but. Well, we didn't make it because something we got, uh, but later oh, on. Oh, I think it started. I think the panel was yeah, starting. Yeah, that's what it was. A few years later though, I was sitting next to Joe, uh, opinionated. And uh, she went up, she goes, go meet him. Go. I go, I don't want to bug him. I don't want to bug him. And he was like the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. Just really yeah. nice. But anyway. Awesome. Axel, do you, have, do you have anything to uh, that you want people to check out? Oh, well, yeah. Go. We got a Patreon. And you know what? That's where I'm releasing our old Lost Mythos episodes. Oh, I'm nice. them. They, we were on Talk Shoe. And Talk Shoe went kaput. Well, they got they changed owners and they lost everything. And yeah, that, our great friend of the pod, Andy, saved all our podcasts. Wow. We have them on some computer, I think, in my garage, but he was like, Axel, I got them. So I'm releasing them on the Patreon. And then I think in the next year or so, I'm just going to put them all on a new feed and, and put them all out there. Let everybody listen because that was some crazy times. For the first like seven episodes, I called the show lost mythos i don't know why and then i called it lost mythos i don't know why i called it mythos <laughs> I, call, I always called it mythos i know some people did too but it's myth it's mythos like well, lost, I, I'm, lost not, I'm not i'm not changing theory care trade <laughs> i'll let you can call it whatever you want Jack. all right all right thanks you thanks. are a podcast legend my friend. well no it's just you get to a certain age and you just don't care. i know you just don't <laughs> care anymore what I, I totally, that's why i said it it's fine. <laughs> who cares right i don't i don't know we it was it's fun to listen back to those but uh yeah that's patreon.com slash dvr and uh yeah we're covering Ron that's just dvr yeah wow we are nice, nice crap dvr baby I, 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 I'm I, old school now, though. I say DVR, and people are like, "What's a DVR?" Yeah, That's the thing you're like TiVo. Yeah, TiVo. Yeah. Um, I, know, I, I I will not listen to the first episode Jay and I ever did. I, I just can't do it. It's so <laughs> bad. But if people want to listen to the old Lost podcast, I get this all the time. If you go on jayandjack.com, if you scroll down, there's a little thing that says archives, and most of the podcasts are on there. You just click on the year and stuff you want to do, and and like that, but I get asked that all the time, and I'm like going, but yeah, I always tell people skip the first one, just just skip it. You got yeah. good from the beginning, man. I have to give Jay props. He produced the hell out of that show. You got a rate. I mean, like when, Ralph, when you were saying like I could tell it wasn't ABC, I liked that. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, wow, but it's very well produced. I can hear what they're <laughs> saying. All our shows are like talk show. We're like on a phone. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. people are going through like drive-ins at Burger King while we're recording the show. There was like crazy stuff happening. It was fun. But anyway, go to DVR podcast. We're covering a bunch of stuff. And also, hello to everybody out there that loves Lost, other pot. This is the best community. Thank you, Jack, Ralph. Thank yeah. you both for yeah. talking with me. I mean, I'm so happy to be here. I have to say. I had to stop myself from just watching Lost all night long after I watched this pilot. I want to do a rewatch now. I'm going to have, I don't know. I might have to do it. And for people wondering, we are, I, I will finish. This is, will be finished. This will, it's going to be two episodes a week, different hosts, different guest hosts every week. Uh, Ralph and Axel are welcome anytime they want. They have open invitation to come anytime <laughs> they want. But next up is uh, Tabla, is it Tabla Russ? Tabula Rasa. 
Pablo Ross. I never had to say it. Jay always said it, and he would get crap for it. And <laughs> and and walkabout, which is probably the episode. The pilot, is, you know, as we've talked about, is so good, but walkabout I think sucks you in. If, you, oh, if, yeah. if, if you're not sucked in by walkabout, just forget it and just move on to a different show. The, yeah, the here. pilot, the pilot <laughs> grabs you and the and walkabout holds you down. Yeah, because it's like <laughs> I was I yeah. was shocked we got walkabout, but this has been fun. I'm I'm pumped. I'm excited. And again, thanks guys for joining us and check out their stuff, guys out there in Lost Land. It's only a dollar, right, Ralph? It's only a, <laughs> it's only a buck. I can't, <laughs> I can't make it any cheaper. I just want people to hear it. I'm, proud, it. I'm proud of the work I'm doing on it, and that's all I want is people to hear it. It's a lot. There, there you go, people. Yeah. All right, and check us out on Crazy Gang TV. We got all kinds of stuff going on, and uh, and we're going to have Dancing with the Stars is coming back. So I know you're I, all excited about that. Ooh, ooh. I know and, one of the people on. Oh, oh no, yeah, no. I do. A, I do a podcast on Dancing with the Stars. So, no, no, no. And, uh, and Downton Abbey, the movie's coming back. So the movie, it's uh, in theaters. I like that. That's fun. So I just received a text that said from my wife that said Bob Odenkirk says that the Breaking Bad movie yeah. is already filmed. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I uh, heard that too. Hot off the press. Nice. So. So a lot of good things going on. But anyway, check us out next week. Every Thursday, we're going to be releasing another episode on Crazy Hank TV. And again, thanks for everyone. And thanks for watching. Yeah, Subscribe. Thanks for having me. Friend, tell an enemy. We don't care. That's all I got. We're out. Yeah. Thank you. Peace.